that, let's go to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Tired of the message. Romans chapter 13, we're going to look at verses 11 through 14. Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. The title of the message is Wake Up and Get Busy. Wake Up and Get Busy. So, wake up. Some of you need to be awoke, right, right now. You know, wake up and get busy, right? You know, wake up. I'm sure you hear it all the time, young people, you know, from your parents and husbands, mostly. You know, wake up. Wake up and get busy. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day for us to gather here at a Bible-believing church, King James only, Lord. Amen. I pray that you fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Ghost, that you may preach a sermon unto us so that we may come out of our sleepness, Lord, that we, need, that we may awaken and go out into this world of lost souls and share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. for what he did, for he is God manifested in the flesh of man, whom bear the sins of all the world, right. and shedding his blood on the cross at Calvary to wash away all the sins for whoever shall call it upon his name to Amen. save him from the lake of fire. Lord, we thank you for what you have done for us. We're very grateful for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. And we pray that you be with the brothers and sisters and fill us with the Holy Spirit. Clear our minds, hearts of anything that may hinder us from learning from Pastor Jay, from the convicting sermon that he may yes. preach unto us, Lord. And we pray that for any brothers and sisters that's going through any physical ailments or or any pain or suffering that they may be going through, Lord. Please be with them and comfort them with the Holy Ghost and fill them with the Holy Ghost, Lord. And we know that your grace is sufficient for us, Lord, and that we may learn from this sermon, that we may take with it, that uh, the things that we do in this world uh, is to save the lost souls, Lord, and preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So wake up and get busy. A lot of Christians you know, need to just wake up. You need to wake up. Why? Because according to Apostle Paul, rapture is imminent. When Apostle Paul wrote this, he was talking about the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Think about it. When he was writing this, he was expecting Christ to return in his lifetime couple thousand years ago. And how far has it gone, right? When Apostle Paul wrote this, he wants Christians to wake up and get busy for God because rapture is at hand. When he talks about in verse 11, time, right? What time is he talking about? He's talking about the time of our salvation. So this salvation, again, don't get confused. It's not the salvation of our soul. When you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're saved once and for all. Your soul is white as clean, I mean white as snow, and your body and soul separated once and for all through spiritual circumcision. So salvation of soul is present possession. You and I already possess it, if we trusted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But the salvation of verse 11 is the salvation of the body at the rapture. It is our complete salvation. When you look at verse 11, 
and that knowing the time, that now it is high time. And you see high time here. High time is a reference to hourglass. Everyone knows hourglass? And there's sand in it. When the sand is high in the bottom glass, what does that mean? The time has almost run out. That's called high time. You know, right out of KJV. Look at it. So if you see that hourglass, and then sand has come down and come down, and then you see that sand has almost come down all the way, and it is filling up all the way. It's called high time. The time has almost run out, and Paul is expecting Christ to return in his time. How about you, Christian? I mean, do you want the Lord to come back right now? Do you expect him to come back in your lifetime? Yes. I mean, every Bible believer in the history, they believe that Christ will come back. He was expecting Jesus Christ to come back in his lifetime. However, as we get further into great apostasy, turning away from the faith as we live in this Laodicean age, what's happening? This doctrine of Christ's imminent return has become less and less and less popular. Right. Who wants to talk about Lord's return when you are consumed with things of the world? Right. Who wants to talk about rapture when all you think about is, you know, where you're going to go for your vacation? Who wants to talk about Lord's return when all you're thinking about is, Dreaming of next house, next car, you know, next mate, whatever it may be. Who wants to talk about Lord's return when all you're thinking about is your job, promotion, money, finances, materialism, materialism, anything. See, during these days, who really thinks about imminent return of Jesus Christ? Apostle Paul wants you to think about it. Apostle Paul wants you to live it. I mean, that's right out of the Bible. God wants you to wake up and get busy. Doing something for him, not for yourself. It's amazing how many years of life people waste trying to fulfill their dream. Yes. Right? They said, let's fulfill our American dream. Right? You know, what's the American dream? When you come to America, you know, especially immigrants, right? And then buy a house and live comfortably, you know, with your family. Is that your American dream? Or is that your dream period as a Christian? You just want to buy a house, have a family, have kids, and then that's it. You know what happens afterwards? When you think that you have fulfilled that American dream, there's only void. Now I need to fulfill another dream, right? When they can't fulfill that another dream, what happens? They go into sin. They go into depression. They go into discouragement. They don't know what to do. And we're talking about Bible-believing Christians out there. People need to wake up. You need to wake up and get busy. You've been getting busy with the wrong things. So many Christians just are busy, but they're busy with the wrong things. Spiritually speaking, you're not. As verse 14 says, you haven't put on the Lord Jesus Christ like you should. What does that even mean? It's change of garment. Spiritually speaking, you've been wearing that flesh, dirty, you know, sinful nature the whole time. Get it off. You trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You need to be putting on the Lord Jesus Christ garment all the time. Amen. It needs to show in your life. A lot of times, you and I, we're all about just talk and talk and talk. It's just full of talking, yeah. right? It's never action. I'm going to put on Jesus Christ, but you never do, right? It's full of fleshly garment. You're, you're just smelly, right. spiritually speaking. If we had a you know, something to measure your spiritual, you know, order. I mean, I wonder how bad it is right now. I mean, how much time did you waste past week? I mean, did you actually 
spend time getting busy for God because you knew rapture is imminent? How many of you even thought about rapture in the past week? How many even thought about imminent return of Jesus Christ during the past week? I could guarantee you, knowing Apostle Paul reading the word of God, every day he was expecting the Lord to come back. He lived his day as if he's coming back today. I mean, when we read our verses, there's high time, there's near, and there's at hand. To me, that's immediate. Yeah. To me, that's going to happen very, very soon. You have to have that kind of attitude when you're living for Lord Jesus Christ. You can't be lackadaisical. You can't be sluggish, sluggard, you know, lazy, whatever word that you could use for being someone who's not doing anything for the Lord Jesus Christ. You're passionate about many things, but you're passionate about wrong things. If you were given to do something that you love to do, you're going to spend hours and hours not even realizing it. True. Think about video games. I mean, kids get it. I mean, not just kids, right? All ages, yeah. right? Men and women get addicted to video games. Because with the introduction of online gaming, people love to play together. I mean, that's all they think about in their brain. Okay, I can't wait for work to finish so I could go home, you know, get on my team with a bunch of people I've never, you know, seen, right? I just know their voice. But maybe they do virtual now. Who knows? And they just spend hours and hours playing video games. Man, they're, you know, there's famous one, right? Call of Duty. I don't know if it's still famous, but they just get online and they just play. Over and over and over. And we have a mission to accomplish, right? We have another team to destroy, you know? You're like my band of brothers, right? They think that you're the closest thing. You're closer than your own family because you spend hours and hours, hours with them. And time doesn't seem like a, anything of an important issue because you're having so much fun. But after you stop playing at 3 or 4 a.m. and you have to go back to work, you know, by 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock the next day, you feel so sluggish. You feel so lazy. Yes. And your boss goes, hey, what's wrong with you? You know, you're just saying, I'm just tired. You know, I didn't get a good night of sleep. I, of course, you didn't get a good night of sleep because you didn't sleep at all. I'm sure some of you have been addicted to certain things in your life, and, you know, time just flew by, right? I mean, if you, are, if you love working out, I mean, you just work out, work out every day. And then those hours of working out, you know, feel so good. And time flies, right? I mean, if you like, you know, riding bicycles, you know, you go, you just ride and ride. And that's like the, your happiest time of your life, right? If, or if you like to run, you know, people like to get runners high, right? And then you just run and run and run. And whatever it may be, right? And certain people love drinking, right? And they spend hours and hours, at, whether it's at home, whether it's at bar, whether it's somewhere, and they just drink. And you love those times. So one thing for sure is that you are passionate about something. So you can't tell me that you're not passionate about nothing. If you, don't, if you love to just stay home and don't do nothing, then that you're passionate about being like a sloth, right? <laughs> You know, sloths move at like what, like 0.15, I don't know what metric it is, you know. And then they don't, they'd rather not move all day, right. right? And then they hide in there so that those bald eagles wouldn't catch them, you know. And they're passionate about that. So as a human being, whatever it is, you're passionate about something, it's just that you're passionate about the wrong things. Especially as Christians, especially, you know, if you know the Lord's coming back soon, if you believe in the imminent doctrine of Lord Jesus, the return of Lord Jesus Christ, you have to be passionate about things of God instead of things of the flesh. If you, are continue, if you continue to live the way you are right now, how do you think the end's going to be? Just think about the long-term vision. Don't think about the short-term 
right? And short term, you can't really do, how should I say? You can't really be productive too much. What do you mean? Short term, at that moment, that wrong thing that you're passionate about is the best thing that you think you could do at that moment. But if you think about long term, is playing video game five to eight hours a day really going to benefit me? Is it going to increase my close relationship with Lord Jesus Christ? Is it going to be helping me getting busy for God or anything else? I mean, we have a you know, TV, right? So I don't know what you watch on TV, whatever it may be. And people spend hours and hours watching TV. And are you passionate about watching certain dramas, certain movies, you know, certain shows, certain documentaries? You're going to spend hours and hours watching those things. Do you think that's actually being passionate about things of God? Does it really help you become a better child of God? Watching worldly TV shows, no. worldly movies, right? You know, some people think that documentaries are good, maybe here and there, but if you are always consumed with documentary and that takes your time away from things of God, then you're passionate about the wrong thing. What does that show eventually? It shows that you're indifferent. You don't care about things of God. You know, some people, I mean, I've heard it. I mean, it makes sense. Some people think that opposite of charity is not hate. Opposite of charity is indifference. Charity is love in action. Then hate is what? You know, no love, no action. Sometimes you, your behavior is all about indifference. You just don't care. Like, you don't care about things of God. You don't care about, you know, word of God, right? You don't care about studying the doctrine. You don't care about souls out there. You don't care about praying for your brethren. You don't care about praying for your pastors. You don't care about praying for pastors. Why? You just don't care about things of God. Then what does that tell you? You're a person full of hate to me because you're all about indifference. All about indifference, you know. Hate doesn't have to be someone like who just, you know, don't like that person forever, right? I mean, if a married couple have no communication with each other and when they start not caring about each other and they're full of indifference, what does that show? You know? Obviously, they don't love each other. Then opposite of love, you know, in normal vocabulary is what? Hate. I mean, I, essentially, you're saying, you know what? I hate you, and I'm, I'm really not going to care about you, right? At least if you do something, and if you, even if you, know, you do something wrong to that person, at least there's some action involved. And maybe there's, you know, there could be a hope because you still care for each other. But once you stop caring about things, once you start becoming indifferent, and you don't really care about what other people think or not, then you have no charity in you, that's for sure. Don't say you love God when you are full of you know, no care attitude, don't care attitude towards things of God. That's why you have to wake up. That's why you have to get busy. And you have to get busy for things of God. Then how can you do that? How can you start waking up and get busy for God. You know, we have good example in the Word of God. And his name is Nehemiah. Nehemiah. He got busy for the Lord. First thing is that he was committed. Nehemiah was committed. If you want to wake up and get busy for God, you have to be committed. You have to be committed to things of God. You have to be committed to the word of God. You have to be committed to God's ministry. You have to be committed to the things that you said I'm going to commit. A lot of times, people aren't even committed. 
you're, I mean, you're so lackadaisical, you're not committed to do anything for the Lord. Like, say, for example, yesterday, which is Saturday. You know, you have, most of you had the day off yesterday. How committed were you for God yesterday? What did you do? Literally, what did you do for the Lord yesterday? Besides from things that you are required to do, right? I mean, if you, I mean, young kids, you know, you have to read three chapters every day just to get a parent's signature, right? You, know, you have to work on the internet ministry because you had to, right? Or else you're going to look bad. Besides from that, besides from those, you know, mundane to you and mandatory stuff to you, how committed were you to the Lord rest of the day? Saturday, 24-7. I mean, 24 hours, right? In a day. Out of that 24 hours, how committed were you to the Lord Jesus Christ? What would you do for him? First of all, did you even make a commitment? You know, don't say these generic things because people love generic things. They want to say high-level stuff so that they don't have to commit. Do you want to, are you going to be here? Say, for example, you know, you, know, you ask a brother or sister, right? You know, hey, hey, brother, you know, are you going to come to street preaching on Friday? I'll see. We'll see. There's no commitment, right? They say, I'll do my best. What is that? What's your best? Your best could be getting out of the bed and stopping there. Your best could be getting to the bathroom, wash your face, and that's it. Your best could be that, you know, sitting on your couch and just watching TV. So doing your best doesn't really translate to anything, honestly. You have to commit. I'll be there, brother, that day then there's certain things that's going to you know, work inside of you. Unless you're a you know, liar, you're, you have pension for lying, right? Then you probably want to you know, honor that promise, honor that commitment. So don't be a you know, wishy-washy, you know, just a high-level type of generic person. You have to be specific. If you're going to commit, commit. I mean, Nehemiah committed to the Lord. He committed to the call of God, right? And he, was, he committed throughout his whole lifetime. And it was daily thing that he did. You have to commit to the Lord on a daily basis. You can't just be like, you know what, Lord, for this year, I'm going to commit to you. And we're in May. I mean, what happened January, February, March, and April? I mean, were you committed to the Lord? You know, when you are committed to the Lord, you're going to think about that commitment on a daily basis. The fact that you did not think about things of the Lord, the fact that you didn't commit to the Lord even yesterday just tells you a lot. You are in slumber spiritually. You're sluggish. You're slothful. And you have to admit it. I do not have, I did not have commitment like I should. Or I should have, like for the Lord. I mean, just like how Apostle Paul, think about it. Apostle Paul was waiting. And he was expecting the imminent return of Jesus Christ. That's how he lived his life. And he was committed to that on a daily basis. But you weren't. And it's a command. He said it. Wake up and get busy for God. Why aren't you committed to be awake and being busy for God? Then, as you can see from Nehemiah, he was committed. I mean, he definitely was committed. And secondly, he was concerned. Nehemiah was concerned. He was concerned about things of God. He was concerned about a situation around him. He was concerned about the people around him. He was concerned about his own country. I mean, how concerned are you about your brethren? How concerned are you about our ministry? How concerned are you about this country? 
you know, I mean, this country is you know, going down the toilet, but how concerned are you about it? Yeah. Yeah. You could always you know, dig the country, you know, dig the administration, you know, all that and stuff. I mean, do you actually care about the country at all? Do you care about the bunch of people, millions of people on their way to hell? I mean, are you concerned at all? I mean, Nehemiah was concerned. I mean, go, go read Nehemiah. Go, go to chapter 2 of Nehemiah. I mean, he was concerned. I mean, when was the last time you were truly concerned about things of God? When was it? Obviously, if you did not have any commitment, you, you don't care about things, right? I mean, we could always go back to just yesterday because yesterday is a great example because it's already fresh on your mind. So yesterday, how concerned were you about things of God? How concerned were you about your brethren? I mean, how concerned were you about our ministry, church ministry? How concerned were you about the country? How concerned were you about lost people on their way to hell? I mean, how concerned were you about your family and their spiritual health? How concerned were you about your own spiritual health? I mean, how concerned were you? I mean, were concerned... It's some, something that you don't take lightly. It's something that you actually think about and spend time thinking about. You take action because you have concern for certain things. You pray because you have concern for certain things. So, think about yesterday. Did you have concern for things of God? It starts from commitment. I mean, were you committed? then with the commitment comes concern. So he was concerned. So Nehemiah, he was committed, he was concerned, and he also, thirdly, he cared. He actually cared. You know? He cared about God's things and God's people. I mean, do you really care about God's things? I mean... When you hear the news and everything going on, when you see your life and people around your life, do you really care for God? Do you care for God's testimony in your life? I mean, think about it. A lot of times you don't care about God, do you? If you did, you wouldn't commit those kind of sins. If you did, you wouldn't be indifferent. What do you think you're indifferent in the first place? Because you don't care about it. I mean, do you really care for things of God? Do you care about God's people? If I don't care about something, I don't think about it, right? Do you think about certain things that you don't care about? Of course you don't. But if you care about something, it will constantly be on your mind. Do you, do you actually, you know, we always pray about it, right? Do you truly care for the lost souls out there? I mean, do you? I mean, do you even think about those lost souls out there on a daily basis or weekly basis, right? Well, it's the only time you hear about it is on a Sunday, you know, from the pulpit or from brothers and sisters' testimony. That's it? I mean, you know what, Lord had to go through for you? You know what he did for you? You know what other folks have to, you know, do? I mean, they pray for you. They reached out to you so that you don't have to burn in hell for all eternity. Why? Because they care. They care for you. And it's not about, you know, all those, that word, you know, people misuse all the time, like sharing or something, but this is truly a care. If I care for a brother or a sister, that means that you know, I'm praying for that person. I want what's best for that person, right? And I think about that person. And when you see that person, it's not someone like who you just see, you know, and that's it. Even if you don't talk, you know, even if you don't have time to fellowship, but you have that bond as brothers and sisters in Christ because you care. But many of you don't care about anybody in this room, right? Oh, he's too new. 
I have to wait until how they behave before I could care about that person, right? He's too old, you know, I have to care about how he works. They're in between, so I have to care how they behave in between, you know? All you think about is they have to live up to your own standard, they have to meet your own, you know, knowledge, you know, they have to be at your own level. You know, you have to wake up. You have to realize how stupid and selfish you are. I mean, spiritually speaking, you're, yeah, I mean, you're not putting on the Lord Jesus Christ right now. Yeah. If you have put on the Lord Jesus Christ, don't you think care comes naturally? I mean, the Lord had compassion for you and I. Yes. He cared for you and I. I mean, that's why he died for us on the cross. Amen. But you, you're the type of person, you know, let's put your name here. And next to it, you know what word goes best for you? Indifference. You, know, you could fight it all you want, but truly examine your heart today. If you haven't prayed for every single person in this room, whether you know their name or not, right? Well, remember, Lord, that brother with glasses and gray shirt you know, who prayed you know, for offering? I'll pray for that brother, right? Or, uh, or sister, you know, I can't remember the name, you know, right now. But some people are bad with names, you know, so I understand, you know. But if you do truly care about that person, you remember, right? Do you, okay, let me ask you a question. Do you know your family's name? Do you know your husband's name? Do you know your wife's name? Do you know your brother's and sister's name? Do you know your grandma's name, grandpa's name? You probably do. I'm just saying probably because there's always one smart aleck goes, oh, I don't know my grandma's name. I just call her, you know, Nana or, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you know because you care about them. How can you say, you know, you've seen that brother for, say, five years. And you're like, I, I don't know that person's name, you know. You've seen that people, like, for at least half a year. Oh, I still don't know their name. Because you don't care. I mean, isn't that obvious? When you don't care, you're not going to remember and you're not going to care. Right. When you don't care, they'll never be on your mind. Amen. That's why you have to care. And when you care, you care about things of God. You care about his ministry. You care about his people. Amen. You do. And you care about all the lost souls out there. Yes. That's where your commitment, your concern, just puts into action. Yes. If I care about God, then I'm not going to do things that's going to displease him. Amen. If I care about things of God and his thoughts, then I'm going to do things that will please him. And you think about that every second of your life. You think about it every second of the day. Great. That's why before you even do anything, if you truly care for God, then you're going to change your action. You're going to change your behavior. Instead of sitting on your butt and doing nothing every day for hours and hours, you're going to do something. Yes. Right? You know, you're going to start committing to the Lord. Like, man, Lord, those days, I know it's in me. I have it in me because I could play hours and hours of video games without stopping because I have a passion for it. But I don't want that anymore, Lord. I want to do something for you. I want to be really, really addicted, literally, to reading your word, studying your word for hours and hours without even Checking the time. Yes. I mean, when was the last time you read your Bible without checking your time? I mean, if you care about somebody, you don't really care about time, do you? Right. I mean, if you're dating someone, and if you really love that person, I mean, are you going to always constantly check your time? No. What does that mean? You don't care. You want that to end, right? right? Yeah. I mean, you, want, you actually don't want to know about the time. 
because you want to be staying together, spend time together longer and as long as you want. No sleep. Right? Yes. Even no sleep, right? right. In, a, in a, how should I say, mortal ways, right? Practical ways, clean ways. Yes. yes. Then, why can't you do that for the Lord? Why can't you care like you care about worldly and fleshly things? Amen. Again, you have to examine your heart because your heart is not there right now. Your heart doesn't love the Lord like you say. True. Your heart doesn't really care for things of God like you say. I mean, your heart isn't committed to the Lord in the first place, and your heart isn't concerned about things of God. Guilty. That's why you don't care. That's why your attitude is always, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. You know, that's probably like the worst answer I could ever hear from a human being's mouth, right? I don't care. Then what do you care? Oh, I know. You care about your flesh and your own things, you selfish, you know, True. blah, 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 right? Yes. I mean, if you're a Bible believer, if you're a saved Christian, you shouldn't care about yourself so much like you do right now. You should just care about what God cares about. That's it. Why are you always going back to your flesh and loving what your flesh always loves? That's why you better be careful when you always say, I don't care. Then maybe God will never care for you. Maybe God says, you know what? I mean, if, if that's your attitude, forget it. You, you probably need to get some chastising, right? You know, because he's a loving father. And if that doesn't work, you know, it's like Romans 8.13, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. So you're going go, go to home, go home early. You know? That's what's going to happen to you. Right. Yes. But at the judgment seat of Christ, man, you got a lot to answer for. Yeah. Man, I care for you. Yeah. I die for you. Look at the marks of my body. But you don't care? Man, what are you going to do? You have nowhere to hide. And before that comes to realization, just think about your heart. I mean, I need to wake up. Your heart needs to wake up. Yeah. You know, they say you need CPR. I mean, you need spiritual CPR. I mean, it's like, it's like a, you know, just walking along with just almost like, a, you know, quote unquote, like a zombie, right? Yes. I mean, you're just walking along and you don't care about anything. And then each day, it's like same thing over and over. Right? As a Christian, you have a privilege and blessing to be ex excited about serving the Lord, committed to the Lord, you know, for each, every day, single day, every day. It should be like another day. You know what? I'm expecting the Lord to come today. Wow. Man, I'm going to make this the best day ever, serving the Lord. Then each day gets better than the other. Man, I want to serve the Lord even just a tiny bit better than yesterday because I'm committed. Because, you know, I am concerned for things of God and because I do care. Do you hear, don't you hear that all the time? When people are fighting, you don't care. You don't care about me. Right? You don't care about this. And then you go, I do care. You know, I, mean, I do care about you. <laughs> well, how many times do you guys have that conversation as a married couple, right? Yeah. You don't care about how I feel. You don't care about what I think, right? But, you know, whether it's man or woman, you're like, I do care, you know? You know? Yes. Even children, too. Like, how come you don't do what I tell you to do? Ah, but I do care, you know? <laughs> like, you know, you say, you know, I care, I care, I care, right? But there's no commitment. There's no concern and your action doesn't show, then to me, you don't care at all. Yeah. But at least you're not the I don't care type either, though. I mean, to me, those people have no hope. Like your heart's like, OK, so you don't care at all, right? Then where are you going to go? It was like, it's like you're, you talk to someone, OK, this is how you go out there and witness. Okay, if you meet you know, Calvinists, if you meet you know, Catholic, you know, if you meet, you know, you know, say, you know, Seventh-day Adventist, right? And the person answers back to you, I don't care. Where do you go from there? No. Okay, okay. Well, I, I don't, I, okay, that's it. It's, it ends just there. Yeah. 
So don't have that attitude where I don't care. Yes. I mean, it's, it leads to indifference. Yeah. You're opposite of charity. So do care about everything. Right. I mean, there are no coincidences in your life. No. So things happen for a reason. Yeah. So think about it and why do those things happen? And when you care about it, when you care for things of God, then you're going to start looking at the perspective of God. You're going to see why, you know, God does it his way instead of me, just like a little spoiled bread, wanting to have it done my way, right? The worst song ever, I want it done my way, right? You know, you do it your way, it's all to the destruction, right? right? You know, people who's listening, if you did it your way continuously, you know, before you got saved and after you got saved, you know, you'll be in jail. You know, some of you might be dead, right? Amen. You know, some of you might be in that total gutter, right? Maybe you'd still be in rehab or whatnot. Right. But you didn't do it your way. You did it God's way. That's why you became a little bit better. Amen. There's a little bit of more hope for you. Yes. Why? Because you want to do it God's way. Then what happens? You become. So when, you're wake, when you wake up and get busy for God, right, in order to do that, you're committed. You're concerned. You have care. Then confidence comes in. Man, when you do things for God, then you do it with comf- I mean, confidence, that courage, right? Yes. Because you care for that soul, because you're committed, and because you're concerned, you could be out there preaching the word confidently. You could be witnessing confidently. You could read the word of God confidently. You could have Bible study confidently. You could listen to preaching confidently. Why? Because it's all about your heart. It comes to your heart Man, but I'm confident that I'm going to get something from God today because I'm committed to things of God. Amen. That's why many people come to church service or listening. I mean, listening, you have to be more committed to listen, so I think there's more commitment. But people who come to church because, you know, they follow friends or family, you know, and they're not that confident. You sit on the pulpit and your, your eyes are already indifferent. You don't care. And there's no confidence in you, right? I mean, are you confident to face God's opposition? Are you confident to think about things of God? Talk about things of God? Are you confident to preach the word in season, out of season, everywhere? I mean, are you confident? If there's no confidence in your life when it comes to things of God, then you have to wake up, yes. you have to get busy, and you have to get right with the Lord. Amen. I mean, first John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. You have to get right with the Lord. Yes. That's why sometimes you're very weary. You're a coward. You know, what's the opposite of being confident? Coward. Right? You're a coward. You're yeah. a chicken. <laughs> I mean, if you're a chicken, I mean, what can you do? You really can't do anything. In the battle, what do cowards do? Run. They hide, run. Yes. They don't want to engage in the battle. True. When they see opposition, what do they do? Just like those Israelites when they saw Goliath, they tremble right. and they hide. That's why. You know, when it's time to do something for God, you're hiding. You are acting like a coward. Amen. And don't say that, you know, I'm not. Oh, yeah? Then show it. Don't show it to me, right? Show it to God. That's right. And just examine your heart. The reason you are not confident the reason you're a coward is because you're not committed, you're not concerned, and you don't care. Then how can you be confident when you're not committed, concerned, right, and caring? Right. I can confidently talk to you, someone who's on your way to hell, because I'm concerned for you. Right. And if you're not concerned for that person, you can't talk to them confidently. Right. Right. I mean, honestly, you just can't because you don't care. Uh-huh. And then right when they say something to you, hey, but you know what? This verse says, I have to work for my salvation. 
And you're like, okay, and he just runs away. No, if you're confident and you want that soul to get saved, you're going to talk to them about the verses, dispensationalism, the right way to get saved during this church age. Yes. Because you're committed to learning the word of God. Amen. And because you concern and you're, you have care for those lost souls out there. And when they give opposition to you, you're confident that God will move their heart. You're confident that God will intervene. You're confident that God wants every soul to get saved. Yes. Then that confidence will translate in your Christian life. Then, as Romans 13, 14 says, you'll be putting on the Lord Jesus Christ because you're confident in the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, there's a big difference between being you know, haughty, proud, you know, puffed up knowledge. We're not talking about that. Those people don't care about others. They only care about their prestige, their own you know, opportunity, their, everything about their own things. But when you are confident in the Lord, whatever the opposition you face, you know that God will prevail. You know that at the end of the day, whatever happens, I'm on the winning side. Amen. Right? I mean, we sing that, right? Yes. I'm on the winning side. Woo! You could have that confidence. But a lot of times, since you don't have that confidence, you think that, man, I'm on the losing side today. You know, and I lost today. I mean, how many days have you gone by this year, you know, January to April, when you examine every single day, if you could, you felt like you lost that day? Mm. Probably majority. Besides from maybe Sunday, maybe a little bit of Wednesday, because Wednesday night service, right? Or maybe a little bit of Friday when we street preach or when we meet on Saturdays here and there. Probably rest of the days. Probably you could say that I lost. Going back to yesterday, how confident were you? Or were you like a coward yesterday? Or were you like a chicken when it comes to really committed and getting busy for the Lord? Because yesterday is a good example. Because majority of you have free day. Majority of you didn't have to do any of the church ministry. And that truly shows who you are. That truly shows you know, if you are really awake and getting busy for the Lord. And then lastly, when you look at Nehemiah, he was consumed. I mean, he was consumed with things of God. I mean, he wanted to obey every word of God, right? He wanted to follow God, Amen. and he wanted to give everything, give all, give every, I mean, every inch of his body he wanted to give for the Lord and his people. When was the last time you are so consumed of things of God that every word of God was so sweet to you? Like you couldn't take it off, right? Like your wife or your husband or your parents had to say, hey, come on, stop reading, stop studying, let's eat. When was the last time? I mean, do you even remember a time, you know, when that ever happened? And then don't tell me, always smart Alex out there. You know, dinner time at 6, you started reading at 5.50. I'm like, oh, I have to go. Mom, I'm reading my Bible, you know. But don't try to fool God. You started reading only like 5, 10 minutes ago. Amen. That's not being consumed, right. Right? right? I mean, Nehemiah gave everything he had. And whether it was Sembalat or Tobiah or anybody came with the opposition, he was confident yes. because he was totally consumed with things of God. Amen. His heart was consumed with things of God. I mean, he's, you, as a saved Christian, you should be consumed with Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, Lord Jesus Christ could be, should be everything in your life. And with that, think about it. You have victory in your Christian walk. Yes. You could say, I'm wearing, you know, I put on Lord Jesus Christ. When was the last time you even went felt like that? When was the last time you had victorious Christian life like that? Again, if you don't do these things like Nehemiah did, you'll always be slumbering. Right. You'll be that sluggish Christian. You'll never get busy for the right things. You'll always get busy for the wrong things to please your flesh, the world, and the devil. And you're going to be going down the toilet constantly. Right? You want your life to be consumed with things of God. Yes. 
Be consumed with the word of God. Be consumed with praying for your brethren and the ministry Amen. and the leaders of church. You want to be consumed with the lost souls out there. Yes. If you do that, then I think, you know, just from experience and hearing all the testimonies and reading the word of God, the doctrine of imminent return of Jesus Christ won't be too foreign to you anymore. It's something that will be most dear to your heart. Amen. Let's pray. Thank <laughs> you.